Let's go! As I am sure a lot of you have noticed, Bitcoin has been having a good sized pullback of nearly 20% over the last couple of days. In this video, I am going to explain why not only is this something that you should not be worried about, but why corrections in the market like this are actually healthy for the overall trend, as well as how you can use them to your advantage if you are trading and not just hodling. It has become a bit of a meme at this point, but buying the dip is actually a fairly reliable way to make money during strong bull trends, such as the one Bitcoin is currently in. I will be explaining why fundamentally Bitcoin is still as strong as ever and why this current dip does not mean that the bull run is cancelled. To give everyone a little perspective on pullbacks during Bitcoin bull trends, let's look at the previous major bull market in 2017. 2017 is largely remembered as a time when almost everything was going to the moon, but if we look back at the chart you can see that there were actually numerous severe pullbacks on the way up to the previous all-time high of almost $20,000. I have highlighted some of the major corrections that occurred in 2017 and as you can see they range from about 24% all the way to 40%. Obviously at the time this occurred they looked very bad. Nobody likes to watch their investment lose 30 or 40% in a week. Because of how bad these dips looked, it was very frequent for newer investors and even some experienced traders to freak out and sell at a loss, only to buy back later at a higher price when they realized the dip was just a temporary correction. This is exactly what you want to avoid doing as an investor because over time, those small losses will eat away at your capital. As you can see on the chart, there are seven corrections highlighted. And these are only the larger ones. There were even more like 10, 15 and 20% dips along the way. If you want to be profitable during this bull run, then it is essential that you learn how to analyze and handle these dips logically, rather than letting a couple of big red candles scare you into giving back the money you have made. Now, if we switch back to the current part of the chart, you can see that at the very lowest point of this dip, Bitcoin was only down 17%. And the long skinny wick on that candle where the bottom was reached indicates that we did not even stay at the price for more than 4 hours. In fact, if we look back at the previous little dip we had a couple of days ago, we see another long wick. This shows that as soon as Bitcoin starts to dip, significant buying pressure enters the market and that pressure rapidly pushes the Bitcoin price up. This buy pressure could be coming from a couple of different sources. It could be people who recently decided to get into cryptocurrency and were waiting for a pullback to buy for the first time. It could be short-term traders filling bids at support levels because they know a bounce is imminent. It could also be institutional buyers who are still trying to fill their bags whenever they can at slightly better prices than they were recently available to do. Most likely, it is a combination of all of the above. Anyways, what this means is that while some people are selling and taking profit as Bitcoin price reaches higher and higher, there are even more people who believe that price will continue to climb. So, how should we handle these dips? Well, there is no magic way to know when these dips will come or how low the price will go, but by combining some fundamental and technical analysis, we can reach some pretty good estimations. First, let's consider the factor that the majority of investors and traders are human. Why does this seemingly simple factor matter? Well, for whatever reason, humans like round numbers. Because of this, a lot of selling is generally done when assets, especially Bitcoin, hits prices such as $10,000 or $20,000 and, as we have seen in the last few days, $40,000. As a lot of you probably remember, for the entire first half of 2020, Bitcoin struggled to pass the $10,000 milestone without quickly selling off and going back below it. After finally breaching $10,000 with conviction, price struggled to get through $12,000, but not for quite as long. The pattern re-emerged when we reached $20,000. As you can see here, when price finally hit $20,000, there was a rapid sell-off all the way back down to $16,500. When we returned to $20,000, there was another less extreme pullback, this time only back down to $18,000. When we hit $30,000, other than a single red candle with a long wick, we barely had a pullback at all. That brings us to now, where we have had three red daily candles in a row. So. 
If we look back at the resistances I just talked about, we can see a general pattern of it taking shorter and shorter to get past them as we have reached higher and higher prices. The reason for this is basic supply and demand. In markets, supply comes from people selling, otherwise there is no one to buy from. If there is no one selling, then price increases until people become willing to sell again. What we are seeing is that each time we get past the level that sellers enter the market at, we have needed to go significantly higher to find more sellers. That is until we hit $40,000. So what made $40,000 different than $30,000 or $20,000? I have a couple of theories. First. $40,000 has actually been a rather frequent long-term target provided by Bitcoin bulls for some time now. In fact, Cameron Winklevoss has been predicting $40,000 Bitcoin price since all the way back in 2013 when he and his brother Tyler first bought $11 million worth of Bitcoin. Many other crypto influencers and analysts have agreed with Cameron that $40,000 would be a solid target for this bull run. Anyone who bases their investment off of these predictions would likely have sold some or all of their Bitcoin when we reached $40,000. Another possible explanation for why $40,000 is taking longer than the last couple of resistances is because people who FOMO'd in at $20,000 and $30,000 are already up more than, well, let's say 50 to 100% of their initial investment. For some people, that is enough to convince them to cash out while they are ahead. And once again, a round number like $40,000 is where a lot of people would do so at. So, can you predict how low Bitcoin will go during dips like this? Well, the likelihood of guessing the exact bottom of a dip is extremely low. So if you plan on buying a dip, you should be prepared to see your position go into the red temporarily. This is never fun to see, but it is part of trading, so it is good to get used to it. One method some traders use to help minimize their negative PNL is by laddering their bids. Laddering simply means that instead of placing your full size position bid at a single price, you spread it out over a series of bids covering a range of prices. For example, during the previous dip, if you believed price was going to bounce at around $30,000 rather than placing one limit order at that level, you would have placed an order at say $30,000, 29,750 and the 29,500. This helps you to average into a position that also helps you to take advantage of the long wicks that dip a little further than expected. This can completely change how you view dips. Rather than being something scary, they turn into a way of either making a quick trade or to add to your long-term Bitcoin holdings. In fact, this is what I am doing personally on the Satoshi Stacker channel. So if you want to follow my journey in doing that, then make sure to subscribe to that channel as well. But I know not everyone is actively trading, so I will also cover how the holders out there can manage dips as well. There are two basic options. You can either continue what you have been doing and hold through the dip, or you can use it as an opportunity to buy a little more to increase your stack. Either way, to avoid worrying about dips, it is best to know your plan ahead of time. That could mean having a price target to sell at, such as 100,000 or 500,000 or even a million. It could also mean holding for a set amount of time rather than until a certain price. Whatever it is, having a set plan takes the stress away from dips and helps to prevent investors from making the mistake of selling low and buying back higher like I mentioned earlier. So I hope this video has been helpful and that maybe the next dip will not seem as bad. Because this bull run is far from over, but there will almost certainly be more dips along the way. Make sure to subscribe with post notifications on so you do not miss out on any future videos. And with that said, guys, thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.